So subsetting a list is a little bit different because um, you can use the double bracket or the dollar sign operator. Uh, you can also use the single bracket operator. So here I've got a list. The first element it's called is a named element called foo. It's an index and it's a sequence one through four. And the second element is named bar and it's the number 0 0.6. So this is a list of two elements in it. Uh, I can extract the first element uh, using the single square bracket and I get what I remember the single square bracket always returns an element that's the same class as the original. So if x is a list, then x bracket 1 is going to be a list 2. So what I get back is a list that has an element called foo, which is a sequence 1 through 4. Now if I use, so if I use the double bracket, uh, then if I say x double bracket 1, what I get back is just a sequence 1 through 4. So, so the difference here is that in the first example, I got a list that contained the sequence 1 through 4, and in the second example, I got just the sequence. That's the difference between the single bracket and the double bracket operator. Uh, in the next example here, I'm using the dollar sign, so, so I'm saying x dollar bar, uh, and that, what that means is that that gives me the element um, that is associated with the name bar. So in that case, it's a, it's a single number 0 0.6. Um, I can also use the double bracket operator and pass it a string. Uh, so x double bracket quote bar is the same as doing x dollar bar, uh, and it just gives me 0 0.6. If I use the single bracket with the name, I can say x bracket quote bar, that gives me a list with the element bar in it. So remember, because the single bracket always returns a list if I'm going to subset a list. So the nice thing about being able to subset an element using its name is that you don't have to remember where it is in the list. So if I couldn't remember whether bar was the first element or was the second element, I don't have to remember whether what where it is in order to use the numeric index. I can just use its name and then I don't have to then it'll automatically extract that extract that element from the list. If you want to extract multiple elements of a list, um, then you need to use the single bracket operator. So, for example, if I want the, thir the first and the third element here, in which case, which is the foo and the baz element, I can pass a, a vector a uh, one three, the numeric vector one three to x using the single bracket operator, and that returns to me a list with the elements foo and the elements baz. Uh, so that's how I extract multiple elements of a list. There's, you cannot use the double bracket or the dollar sign operators when you want to extract multiple elements of a list. The nice thing about the double bracket operator, which is different from the dollar sign, is that you can use the double bracket operator to, to, to index a list where the index itself was computed. So notice that when I used the dollar sign before, I, had to, I actually typed out the word bar. I had to type out the name of the object. But sometimes the name of, sorry, the name of the element, so, but sometimes the name of the element um, is actually the result of some computation. So for example, here I've got a list with three elements, foo, bar, and baz, uh, and then I create a variable called name, uh, which is actually the string foo. So if I use the double bracket operator on this variable here, uh, notice that the um, there's no element in the list that has the name name in it, um, but there is an element of the list that has the name foo in it. So now when I when I pass this variable called name uh, into the double bracket operator, it returns me the op the element that was associated with foo because that's what the value of the name variable is. So if I can if I compute the index that I want to use, then I have to use the double bracket operator. If I use the dollar sign, then it's going to literally look for uh, an element of the list that's that has the word name associated with it, and that of course doesn't exist in this list. Um, so to use the dollar sign, I need to use a literal symbol. Now the double bracket operator can take an integer sequence um, uh, in as rather than a single number, and the way you can think of this is that it kind of recurses into the list. So if you look at this current list I've got here with the first element a. Um, is another list which has elements 10, 12, and 14. So suppose I wanted to extract the number 14. Well, that's really the third element of the first element, right? So it's the third element of the list, which happens to be the first element of the other list. And so I can extract the 1, 3 element from it by passing the vector 1, 3 to it to the x list using the double bracket operator. Uh, and that's equivalent to kind of doing this double subsetting of 1 and 3. I can also extract the first element of the second element by, use, by passing the integer vector 2, 1 to get 3.14.